it's not always that you look at a side, the revelation of the IPL in many ways, a side that wins in its first year, a side that comes runner-up in the second year. Each year at the start of the IPL, you say, can they really? Do they have the side? I, I still remember IPL 22, they went and won it. There were people who were playing the IPL for other teams who didn't give Gujarat Titans a chance. And then they showed in 23 that they weren't a flash in the pan. And yet, we get into the start of IPL 24 and once again, we're looking at them the same way. We're looking at question marks. Can Gujarat Titans once again sock us in the jaw and says, don't ever look at the question marks with us again. We'll wait and see. That'll make for a thrilling IPL if they can do that because there are two giant holes in their team the moment you look at it. The first, Hardik Pandya. He got poached. There's Hardik Pandya. The crown jewel is sitting there and suddenly before they realize there's been a heist. There is no Hardik Pandya available that takes away a new ball bowler, that takes away a top order batter, well, middle order batter, number four, number five kind of batter and that takes away a captain who looked like he could do no wrong. How do you fill a hole like that? That's number one. What about number two? Mohammad Shami, 28 wickets last year. He carried the bowling with him. I know there was a spin of Rashid Khan who gave you 27 wickets. Mohit Sharma gave you 27 wickets. How do you replace 28? What they've tried to do is get Mohammad Shami's great opening partner Umesh Yadav in and Umesh Yadav comes in with some good performances in Mushtaq Ali behind him, 15 wickets from 6 games and he's had a pretty decent season overall. But if he can give them a 20 wicket season, that'll be excellent. A 28 wicket season happens very, very rarely. So two big holes to fill over there for them and as a result of one of those two, the fact that you have a young new captain. Remember talking to Brendan McCullum many years ago and he said, I would straight away invest in Shubman Gill and if he comes off, I've got a captain for 10 years. How will Gill, the captain, fit in? Especially because Gill, the batter, now in the absence of everybody else, has, is, has the single biggest role to play in that side. What he did with the bat in 2023 was reminiscent of what Virat Kohli did in 2016. And if anything can draw comparisons with that year in 2016, it has to be a very, very special year. And it was. That's 100 he got. What, 120 or in 60 balls against the Mumbai Indians. A lot of us were there at the ground watching the game. And I'm being absolutely honest, we were pushing our jaw up like that because our jaw was dropping with the kind of stroke play that we saw. Close to 900 runs in a season. Can he do that again? The good thing for Shubman Gill is, I know it's a completely difficult to compare form, almost impossible to compare form, but as the series against England went along, he got his confidence back. And for players like Shubman Gill, that is what you want. And I know that within the team circles, Shubman Gill, the way he looks at a game is, is appreciated. So Gill as captain, has got a big challenge in front of him. Can he take a side that's been winner and runner-up through to the playoffs again? And can he have a big season once again? Those are two huge things for Shubman Gill to do. So, he'll be one of the players I'll be watching very carefully in this year's IPL. So then, let's start to go down that side. Who does he open the batting with? Gill and Saha has been... A good pair for them. Not a wow pair, but it's been a good pair for them. But Saha's a year older. He's not had quite the same season that he had. I won't be surprised if Gujarat Titans start again with Saha, but now they've got to start filling the holes in that top order. Because as you go down the order, they've got some fantastic finishers. Whether it's Miller, whether it's Omar Zai, whether it's Tevatia again, Rashid Khan, they've got a lot of power down the end, but they need to fill it at the top. Gujarat Titans have bet on the promise of Azmatullah Umar Zai to do what Hardik Pandya did. If you look at the skills that Umar Zai brings, which is bowling in the power play if required, but bowling at a sort of bustling pace, seam up, then he does what Hardik Pandya does. Can he go and finish powerfully like Hardik Pandya did? Yes, he can. So it would seem that there is a like-for-like like there without quite 
knowing whether Umar Zai has it in him to play the big day like Hardik Pandya did. But I think it's a wonderful selection. And every time I've seen Umar Zai play in the last 12 to 18 months, he's looked a better and better player. He's got hundreds, he's got wickets, he's finishing powerfully. He's going to be a big star for Afghanistan in the days ahead. Gujarat Titans would want to say, wait on being the big star for Afghanistan be the star for us this year. So Sai Sudarshan last year was fantastic. I actually believe they have the option of opening with Gil and Sai Sudarshan. Maybe try out Vijay Shankar, who was one of their sort of sleeper hits last year. Up at number three, then play Miller at four, Umar Zai at five, and try and throw in Robin Mins. We've heard so much about Robin Mins. He's not done anything at this level of the game, but can you throw him in at number six? His challenge will be to be the big hitter, but also to be able to read Rashid Khan. That is why you want Saha, because it's not very easy to suddenly come in and read uh, Rashid Khan. So those are, those are the options that they have. And then you come into the, in, into the lower order with Tevatia and Rashid Khan. If they need an extra spinner, they play Noor maybe, but that finishes their quota. They need extra pace. They're not sure of Umesh Yadav and they spent a lot of money on Spencer Johnson, who's, who's genuinely quick. He's had a fabulous big bash. But one of the things we've learned in recent years is that a great big bash season does not translate always into a great IPL season. So for Spencer Johnson, big price tag behind him, but genuine pace, that's the one thing in his favour. They'll start with Johnson over Josh Little, but they do need that pace. Then the other question mark. Mohit Sharma came out of nowhere and delivered 27 wickets last year. Can he do that again? Can he give you 20 plus wickets? Forget 27 wickets. Because if he doesn't, then the bowling just starts to look a little iffy. The bowling that did so well for them in 23 now starts to look a little iffy in 2024. So those are the two issues before uh, Gujarat Titans. The weight of reputation, a new captain, key players leaving, whether an experienced player can come back and have that kind of season. So there's a lot hanging in the air for Gujarat Titans as there was in 22 and 23 and they produced those dramatic finishes. But uh, if they make the playoffs this year, I think we should stop what they're doing and applaud.